All right. Uh, thank you for tuning in again. We're going to have the teen class study that was scheduled for 12-9. And we're going to be talking about, in this class, we're going to be talking about Jesus' last visit to Nazareth. Uh, Jesus' third tour of Galilee and the Twelve Apostles sent out on the limited commission. And also Herod Antipas hearing of Jesus' uh, mighty works and then how the story of how Herod killed John the baptizer. All right, so we'll go ahead and start um, with Jesus' last visit to Nazareth found in Mark chapter 6, 1 through 6, and then Matthew 13. 54 through 58, and we will be reading from Mark chapter 6. All right, verse 1, Mark chapter 6, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, uh, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are there not his sisters with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives and in his own house. And now he could not do uh, no mighty work there except that he laid his hand on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Now we see that uh, Jesus here in his last recorded visit to his hometown of Nazareth and uh, much like the first account of his rejection at Nazareth, he was teaching in the synagogue, and people there were really astonished. They knew who he was, but they only considered him to be Mary's son, a carpenter, uh, and brother of James and Joseph, Judas, Simon. And then he had some sisters, too, that it's revealed to us, but... Um, Jesus points out to his disciples that anywhere a prophet goes, he's going to have honor except at his own, his own country, and they won't honor him because they, they think they know him. But in this case, he, they did not uh, know Jesus. They did not recognize him as the Son of God and having uh, godly power here on earth. Um, Matthew states that he did not do many mighty works because of their unbelief uh, he knew they didn't believe and so he did not heal the, heal many people it just says in luke and here mark's account excuse me mark's account that we read that he just healed a few sick people and uh, then he says he went about the villages uh, in the circuit teaching so uh, we see him leaving nazareth uh, in a sad state the one, same one he found it in of, uh, of unbelief, and he marveled at that. Next, we'll talk about Jesus' uh, third, third tour of Galilee, third tour of Galilee, sorry, and the Twelve Apostles' limited commission. And this is found in Matthew 9, chapter 9, verses 35, all the way through chapter 11, verse 1. And then the shorter, shorter accounts are found in Mark, 6, 6 through 13, and Luke 9, 1 through 6. And uh, we're going to look at Matthew's account because of some of the teachings that um, Jesus teaches his, uh, instructs his apostles on uh, right before he sends them out, right before they go out. And uh, some things would be applicable to us that we need to uh, take account of. So we'll, we'll read into that. All right. Um, Let's read the whole account, Matthew 9, 35 uh, through chapter 11, verse 1. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, 
because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of harvest, send out laborers into his harvest. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease. And now the names of the twelve apostles were first Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and uh, Leb- Lebanus, Lebanius, whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And these twelve Jesus sent out, commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, enter a city of the Samaritans, excuse me, but go rather to the lost house of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick and cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts nor bags for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that city, house or city, Shake off the dust of, from your feet, as surely I say to you, it be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Persecutions are coming. So then he has some other teachings here for them as they, as they go out. Um, and that will take up the rest of uh, chapter 10. So let's read that. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpent and harmless as doves, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour that what you should speak for is it not you who speak but the spirit of your father who speaks in you your now brother will deliver up brother to death and the father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved and when they persecute you in the city Flee to another, for surely I say to you that you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have been called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in light, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are numbered, or all numbered, and do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I 
I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who gathers a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these a little cup, only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall be by no means lose his reward. And now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. All right, back to the uh, back to the first verse. There we see. Uh, that we read would have been verse 35 of Matthew 9. Uh, We see Jesus leaving uh, Nazareth and going around Galilee again. This is his third tour of Galilee, uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing the sick. Uh, He has much compassion and love on his people. Verse 36 says he saw them as weary and scattered, having like sheep having no shepherd. And so we see that um, Jesus is loving and merciful Savior. He also points out that uh, to his apostles there and disciples following him that there was a, a lot of lost people and we needed to pray to the Lord of Harvest to send out laborers. And that's what he's fixing to do, send out the laborers the twelve apostles uh, on their limited commission and we see then that he gave them power over unclean spirits and all kinds of sickness and disease so he could uh, they could heal them their miracles would uh, confirm their message that they had the authority from God to be preaching that and then we see the list of uh, list of twelve apostles who uh, are fixing to be going out to preach. And in his sending out of the twelve, we see that they are not supposed to go to the Gentiles or to the Samaritans to preach, but rather the lost house of Israel. And that's what they are, uh, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that is supposed to be their main focus. Um, Interesting, when we get to Acts, we'll see that that was Paul's practice too that he go to the synagogue first, and if he was rejected there, then he would preach to the Gentiles. They were to preach uh, the kingdom of heaven as a hand, and like we said, heal, heal those with various diseases, lepers, and being cast out demons. And uh, he tells them, this is a great expression, I think, in verse 8, Freely you have received, freely give. They were so blessed to be with Christ, to see his teachings, and to be eyewitnesses to uh, at this time that they were just really should give out the same that they had taken in freely. And uh, they should be you know, so grateful and, uh, that Jesus is giving this power and then the people too, being able to... Uh, have more preaching and more healing uh, in their community was just a great thing he told them not to take any money with them uh, not to uh, prepare not to not to pack extra clothes uh, no money bags that they were uh, worth being taken care of the worker is worthy of his food there verse 10 and uh, when they were 
get to the city or uh, they were to enter a house and if they were to be accepted by the people then that's where they should stay uh, but if the household and then it's also the town too then they were just supposed to to let them reject them that wasn't wasn't to be a fight or anything they were just supposed to if that was the will of the people that they didn't want to listen to the gospel then they were supposed to shake the dust off their feet don't let it bother them just continue on uh, with their with their preaching and their healing and Jesus points out that that would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment and that's I think a comparative kind of example that uh, because uh, it's comparative because Sodom and Gomorrah was uh, destroyed for their sin uh, mainly for their homosexuality and uh, but these people had the authority of God right in front of them and uh, they rejected it I believe that's what it's kind of a comparative kind of example there uh, so it would be worse off for the city that rejected uh, the apostles teaching under Jesus authority Jesus tells them too that when they are going out to preach they are going out uh, it says you will be like sheep in the midst of wolves that there was going to be hard times and there would be persecutions coming for him preaching in the name of Jesus they would be delivered up you know before councils and uh, judges, magistrates, governors, kings, and also beatings inside the synagogue, which was you know, supposed to be a place of learning uh, that of the scripture. And so he's going to tell telling them that's going to be a tough time, but um, but that uh, they should not worry about that, and that the Holy Spirit would speak for them uh, when they're time came that they uh, they just let the Holy Spirit work through them and the message of God would be delivered so they were supposed to be wise at the same time harmless harmless as doves um, then he goes on to talk about it's some of the persecution is going to be bad enough to where families will turn against each other uh, all to be in the name of being against Jesus. And um, Jesus also points out to uh, his apostles there that that uh, they have called the master Beelzebub. They have called Jesus Beelzebub. Remember they said he had how he was casting out demons. And so he warns them, you know, they're going to call you more, more than that probably. Uh, therefore, he said, don't, don't be afraid of them. Uh, they weren't going to get more special treatment because the servant is not better than the master. So they would probably... What he's saying is you're probably going to come up against uh, harsher words. I believe that's what he's saying. But not to be scared of that. What they uh, needed to fear was the person that uh, could control, could uh, kill the body and the soul uh, internal in internal judgment. Those who were... Uh, going to be persecuting the physical part of them they would not they should not be scared of those because uh, they couldn't touch the soul Jesus also points out that uh, that God knows them and God's gonna take care of them he mentioned that um, he was aware of even coins falling to the ground and that all the hairs on their head were numbered, and they were much more valuable than uh, than sparrows that were sold for for copper. Um, and uh, he also goes on to say, there, whoever confesses 
Jesus before men that he they that Jesus will confess them before God in heaven but if you if they start on uh, denying Jesus before men then we will also be denied before heaven before father in heaven before God Jesus also points out that there's going to be a division of people, uh, sometimes that of in the, even in the family. And remember, we talked about in earlier lessons that Jesus, there was going to be a, a hard division of those who believe and those who do not believe. And sometimes that's even going to be in households. Um, and he, but he talks about you've got to put Jesus first. Uh, if you put others, your family in front of you, um, your immediate family, maybe even your kids, then you w- would not be worthy of Jesus. And although this is going to be hard, we should be following Jesus. Take up your cross and follow me. Uh, he who didn't do that was not worthy of Jesus. Uh, he also points out in 39 that... Um, those who give up self, those who lose their life, we're going, we're going to find it eternally. I think that's what he's talking about. It will be eternal life that they will find uh, for Jesus. Uh, it's a, not of hanging on of self or hanging on of family that counts, but Jesus counts, that he, he is first and uh, he's going to rule over our lives. Even even in difficult times where you have to literally take up a, a cross of hardship and follow after him. Now that would be, I think, a figurative cross, but uh, what he's talking about is a, is a hardship, a cross of a hardship that comes on that. I may have uh, misspoke there, but I will fix that. He goes on to say that whoever would receive the uh, apostles and their teaching would be would be rewarded, and even a, in a small way uh, would be rewarded. Even just maybe a little cup of cold water uh, to quench their thirst would be a reward for the people uh, that did accept their teaching and uh, supported them in in uh, out on their commission their limited commission is what they uh, we refer to this at this time because they only went to the household uh, lost sheep of Israel and uh, just to the Jewish brethren to preach and uh, to heal at this time I should say the Jewish uh, nation the descendants at this time Uh, and then it says after he uh, he commanded his uh, 12 apostles and taught them that he departed from there, and he went and preached uh, as well in the cities around. This would be continuing his uh, teaching as his third Galilean tour. All right, next we will uh, talk about, uh uh-oh, excuse me. There we go. We'll talk about, sorry about that, about uh, Herod Antipas, hears of Jesus uh, miracles and the works that he's doing and then we will review how Herod uh, killed John the baptizer and uh, the readings will be you can find these in Mark uh, chapter 6 verses 14 through 29 uh, Matthew 14 1 through 12 also in Luke 9 7 through 9 that's a very abbreviated account as as you can uh, see there and we will be reading from uh, mark's account Uh, starting in verse 14 now king herod heard of him of his name had uh, for his name excuse me had become well known and he said talking about that was about jesus now uh, and herod said to himself john the baptist is risen from the dead and therefore these powers are at him work in him and others said it's Elijah and uh, even others said that it's a prophet or one like the prophets 
And when Herod heard, he said, This is John, whom I've beheaded. He has risen from the dead. And then we go on to talk about, uh, we find out how that had become about how Herod had killed John the baptizer. So let's read that in verse 17, starting in 17. For Herod himself had sent and laid hold on John, and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Because John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John. Knowing that he was a just and holy man, he protected him. And when he heard him, he did uh, many things, and uh, he gladly heard him. Verse 21, And there was an opportune day came when Herod on his birthday gave a feast for his nobles, the high officers, and the chief men of Galilee. And when Herod's daughter herself came in and danced and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he also swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And immediately she came in with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, yet because of his oath and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl and the girl gave it to her mother. And when the disciples heard of it, they came and took away the corpse and laid it in the tomb. All right, we see that uh, as Herod had learned of uh, hearing about Jesus and Jesus' miracles and um, the authority and power that Jesus possessed, uh, Herod's guilty conscience started bothering him, didn't he? He said, John... John the baptizer has, has risen from the dead and uh, the powers are at work in him and others you know, talked about, well, maybe it's Elijah or one of these other prophets have, have uh, risen. And um, Herod knew that he had done wrong in beheading John. Uh, and that's why he thought it was, it was John risen from the dead. I wonder if he worried about if he was going to get a little payback for that action too it had to have bothered him uh, now what had caused uh, Herod to put John into prison well Herod had uh, went to visit his brother Philip and left with Philip's wife he st stole his wife away from him and uh, came back to rule and John the baptizer confronted him and told him that was not right And, uh, of course, Herodias was uh, going to hold that against John. She didn't want anything to be said bad about her. I mean, she would have liked to have killed him, but Herod feared John. He also feared the people because the people knew John was a prophet. Of course, John was a prophet. He was the prophet for uh, Jesus. We see a, a, a time came when uh, it was Herod's birthday and he was putting on a big feast and uh, Herodias' daughter came in and uh, danced uh, for them and entertained them and they were really pleased with that and so he made this uh, rash uh, statement, you know, whatever you want, I'll give it to you even up to half of my kingdom, and all these uh, witnesses were, you know, present and listening to this. And so the girl inquired her mother, of, of her mother, what what should I ask, what what good thing? And <laughs> Herodias had been waiting on this uh, opportunity, and she wanted the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And that's what, uh, that's what happened. The king would not stand up for 
the just and righteous uh, John the Baptizer, but instead sent over word to the prison to have him executed, and they brought in uh, the head to John, to the girl, and then she took it to, to her mother. And uh, his disciples came and took the corpse to uh, put it in a tomb there. That would be John's disciples, I believe. That's what he is referring to there. All right, in today's lesson, we talked about Jesus' last visit, last recorded visit to Nazareth, and uh, how he was rejected again. Uh, the people, you know, thought that they knew him, knew who he was, but uh, they really didn't. They really didn't know Jesus. They couldn't see uh, past the uh, the physical idea that he was just Mary's son and just a carpenter. And that's pretty sad. They uh, we need to uh, kind of take from that that we need to look to see what Jesus really is in our lives too. And then we talked about Jesus' uh, third tour of Galilee, how he went about preaching and healing. And also how the twelve apostles were sent out on the limited commission to the to the Jews only, and uh, how they were uh, supposed to go from city to city, let the Holy Spirit uh, speak for them. They were going to be persecuted. They weren't supposed to be surprised by this because they, the Pharisees and scribes, had been saying that Jesus was of uh, Beelzebub, so they're. Don't be surprised when you hear worse, and it's coming. Um, persecution is part of uh, part of teaching Jesus, and also that uh, this uh, there was going to be a divide of believers and non-believers, and that they would be turning the non-believers would be turning against uh, even their own family members who would follow Jesus. But we they were not supposed to. Uh, to give up on Jesus, be worthy and follow after him and not to uh, put others uh, even in hardships in front of as hard it was as hard as it was going to be not to put others in front of Jesus. And then we talked about also uh, Herod Antipas and his guilty conscience for uh, beheading John the baptizer and actually how that story transpired. All right, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. That should wrap up our studies of uh, the great Galilean ministry, that, that uh, this period of time in Jesus' ministry is uh, referred to. And we will begin next study, will be about uh, his retirements, the period they call the retirements. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Let's continue to, to pray for one another.